this is Cladney's plate. Chladney, or Cladney is spelt C-H-L-A-D-N-I, and I think it's Cladney. Well, if I put a violin bow down here, I can get it to resonate at frequencies, but we haven't got a violin bow, so I'm going to tune it to 450 hertz, where, where this thing has a resonance, and you'll be able to hear it singing away quite nicely to you. And as I change the resonance, I'll go through the resonance there, and you get this sound coming out. This, the middle of the plate is being shaken up and down, and it's held fixed there, but the plate is going to bow out, and there are going to be places, which I can't show you yet, where it's going to be stationary, and other parts which will be oscillating up and down like mad. In order to visualise it, what we're going to do is put some carborundum powder, which is a little material which is about 0.3 millimetres in diameter and sprinkle it on the surface. So I just do that gently and you can see that I'm spraying it all over the whole surface. And then we turn up the amplitude of oscillation and you can see it move. into this lovely pattern. Well, we've got lines where the grains of carborundum have gone, where the displacement of the metal is zero. So it's shaking up and down, but this place, it doesn't move at all. This is called a, the nodal line. This is the place where nothing is displaced. No displacement means nodes. And the seven, in the middle, you get another node. And then round the outside, you get these beautiful lines, symmetric for this rectangular shape, showing you these nodal lines. Uh, that's the place where they like to be thrown, so it's being thrown up and down, and if they end up there, they're not going to be moved at all, and so that's the place where they end up without wanting to move. I can also run this experiment again at a different frequency. I, if I turn this up to about 690 hertz, this plate... And you're getting these curved lines coming out. Right there, George. In this case, you've got another pattern like that with lines at the edge. OK, so we've, we've ended up with a particular pattern. Now I'm going to throw a spanner in the works by showing you what happens if I use very fine powders. This is much smaller diameter. This is lycopodium powder, which is very, very small. And I'll sprinkle a bit on. Oh, that's probably too much. Over the top, and then we'll see what happens to that. And having done that, you can see I've got more particles in the middle. I've still got this pattern on the outside with a heavier grey particle. But inside, you have a yellow pattern, a square pattern, which is lying between this line on the outside and the grey area in the middle, equidistance. And this is the area where the displacement of the plate is the greatest. In English, this plate is flapping up and down, and where the amplitude of the flapping motion up and down is the greatest, that's where these particles end up. And the reason for that is due to the effect of this flapping up and down motion on the air. Scaling this up to the, let's take this as the large particle, and it's jiggling about on the surface, and it finds itself at the place where there is no jiggly motion of the surface up and down, and it just stays there. This represents a smaller particle, and I'll have a little bed of them. And as this is thrown up, there's a partial vacuum in the air underneath this bed of particles, and the air rushes in from the sides to fill that vacuum. Nature abhors a vacuum. So you find that there is a flow of air underneath these particles, which gathers them all together in the same space. So Why if you, didn't that happen to the big particles? The big particles decided to sit it out on the sidelines like... Uh, those, those people who go round uh, dances and sit on the sidelines, what do you call them? Men. <laughs> yes, probably, drinking their beer. And, and, and they stay there and don't get involved in the activities. Whereas these women all jump up and down and then underneath and they're all sucked into one area. Only that's happening here. Look at it. They've made little piles and as these piles rise up, air goes underneath them, and instead of spreading out, the air drags them back into a little pile. This was an effect discovered by Faraday in 1830, 
1831, yes, 1831, 180-odd years ago. And this is called Faraday piling. Let me read from his paper. The beautiful series of forms assumed by sand, filings, or other grains when lying upon vibrating plates discovered and developed by Cladney are so striking as to be recalled to the minds of those who have seen them by the slightest reference. They indicate the quiescent parts of those plates and visibly figure out what are called nodal lines. 